Welcome to Disrupt, a series about Canadian artists who are movers and shakers from the disability community. I'm your host, Taylor Olson, he, they pronouns, and I'm a bisexual filmmaker from Halifax, Nova Scotia, living with a history of eating disorders and CPTSD. This week, we have four amazing creators from a variety of genres, starting with an exciting superstar from the world of performance art. Her name is Erin Clark, she lives in London, Ontario, and she's a world-class parapole athlete. Yep, that's exactly what it sounds like. Competitive parapole dancing. Pretty cool. She's literally an aerial artist, and she's written a memoir recommended by the New York Times. Basically, she's trying to make us all look bad. We're going to show you a piece Erin created with collaborator Laura Von Holt after she was asked over and over again, by people on Tinder, of course, whether or not she was able to have sex because she happens to use a wheelchair. Let's see what they had to say. The duo performs on stage. Erin wears black sparkly lingerie and fishnet stockings, while Laura wears a red leotard and red and black tutu. Flaming Mermaid Broken Star. Oh look, you're in your underwear. <laughs> Laura puts the hula hoop she's holding at the back of the stage and returns to Erin's side. Um, now that you're in your underwear, I think that this is a really excellent time to educate the people on how to properly respond to a woman when she shows herself to you in her lingerie. Um, so, it's a skill, okay? Um, so I'm gonna need a volunteer, you, okay. Laura goes yes. to a woman at the front okay, of the stage. So, um, what's your name? My name is Doss. Yeah. Okay. Doss. New to this. Okay. okay, so, um, Doss, we're gonna do a little role-playing exercise, uh, but I'm not in the light, so I'm gonna go here. I'm waiting for it. Laura um, moves back toward Aaron. We're gonna do a little role-playing exercise, and um, let's pretend that this is Aaron, and she is a woman, and you are a person, and Aaron has just revealed herself to you in her lingerie. Aaron eyes the audience member. D that's her, do you like it, Glare? It's okay, don't be scared about it. Yeah, just, just like... If you ever get nervous during the show, just surrender and we'll take care of you. Like, don't worry about it. Just, there's like, it's a safe space. Um, okay, so Erin's in her underwear. Now, when a woman shows herself to you in her lingerie, there are several appropriate responses. The first response is applause. Erin yeah. <laughs> bows. Okay. Okay. okay, really good job, you guys. Um, 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 Aaron, there's some people in the back row that have tiaras on. <laughs> okay. Aaron points yeah, okay. and waves at them. Okay, okay, this is really good. Um, okay, so the second appropriate response when a woman is underwear, um, it just it's a little role playing thing. So you're gonna it goes like this, like, oh my, oh my, oh my, oh my. You are so pretty. You are so pretty. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Seeing you in your underwear. Seeing you in your underwear has changed my life for the better. <laughs> has changed my life for the better. Really good job, yeah, okay, really good job. Everybody's got that now? Okay, really good work, really good work. Um, okay, so that was just a little bit um, of like pretend, but now we're gonna get into really real science. Aaron um, goes to the back of the so, stage and yeah, grabs some sparkly know. pages. Oh, okay, thank you so much. She hands them okay. to Laura. Okay, so. <laughs> Thank you for coming to my symposium. Now that you have seen Erin in her lingerie and you like it, you're probably thinking, oh my God, she is so sexy. How can I get me some of that? <laughs> but some of you may find all of the sexiness a little intimidating. Um, so I'm gonna break it down for you in my guide, how to seduce this super famous sexiness. Okay, um, be warned, this is not for the timid. Erin shakes her head. Aaron has 64 erogenous zones. 32 of them are located in her brain. <laughs> Things she likes to have sex with. One, music. Two, trees. Three, the weather. Four, lucky people. <laughs> Aaron has seven vaginas. This is both a metaphor and a reality. Okay. Okay. Four of her vaginas are located in her heart. Once you have collected all of the magic mushrooms, you may proceed to the following three vaginas. Erin looks down at herself and uncrosses her legs for a moment. Um, now that we have covered spiritual lovemaking, let's move on to anatomy. Okay, um, I'll begin with the more familiar erogenous zones. Number one, muscles. Specifically yours, you should have them. 
job, really good job. I see some muscles. <laughs> Aaron um, mimes lifting weights. <laughs> um, number two, compliment. Give them to her all over. I will demonstrate. Laura leans close to Aaron's body. Ooh, girl, you look good. You smell like an after school special. <laughs> So impressive. Erin is currently working on a performance art piece called Visual Pleasure, which will delve into how people look at folks who identify as disabled. If you want to read her memoir, it's called If You Really Love Me, Throw Me Off the Mountain. Great title. All right, stick around, because we have more amazing artists to introduce you to when we come back on Disrupt. Welcome back to Disrupt. Our next artistic duo is also multi-talented, Wai Jung Koo and Jody Chan. They're based in Toronto and use their many talents to promote disability justice. Check out this fantastic experimental short film featuring one of my favorite art forms, stop action photography. It's called A Language of Limbs and is inspired in part by YJ's experience navigating the healthcare system as someone who is neurodivergent, chronically ill, and living with a disability. Check it out. Hysteria, the language of limbs. Four wobbling vertebrae appear vertically. To choose this is to womb the head in wilderness, to wed the suffering of our grandmothers, their survival symptoms. Dark threads move through the bones. What state criminalizes need? Claim crazy as our camouflage. Let our lover's hair whip us in repentance, but first, Pull the diagnosis screaming from our fists. The threads pull the bones away. A chaos of symptoms. Square tiles appear. Ungovernable emotion. Heightened sensitivity of the skin. The rumble of an organ in a doorless church. They spread out. Notes escaping hoarsely as we sleep, as we eat, as we emerge from another week. They form a line. We nurse our craving. The urge to find a fever dream. A stomach hernia. A reason for the suffering. Body as blank page. A rupture between history and memory. The line snakes around, then loops back on itself and blinks out. Colorful rocks appear and wobble. In the hospital, my body becomes a map. It is not time that kills us, but distance. Diagnosis sketches new roots, the impulse to lie for living sake. A lace ribbon flows between them. Ancestor, someone who should have known better. Ancestor. Someone who passed on more than they meant to. My therapist hunts the monster in me. She seeks a cold, brick-lined cage, a mappable escape route with known origin. The rocks slide away. Instead, the hallway between my mother's bed and the nurse's station, multiplied by the length of a nightmare, the lace trim of a dress. The ribbon undulates. Everything I write is precarious. Every time we drive by North York General, a river caves in on itself. I arrange my watery face in my grandmother's likeness. The ribbon crumples and slides away upward. Wrapped candies appear. A fistful of ginger candies. One pair of plastic slippers, precisely arrayed. All of my ancestors know longing. Longing is often our connecting place. Candies disappear. In 15 years, I will have outlived every woman in my bloodline. It must be a mistake. The last candy unwraps and slides away. The wrapper folds into a square. Inside the hospital, my body becomes a map. More wrapper squares appear. A scale from one to 10. Dull to burning. Gown to shoulder. Naproxen to nosebleed. The wrappers slide away. A pelvis appears. Inside my body, hospital becomes a feeling. Various medical items appear within. Laughing gas without the laughter. The bareness of my lip without a ring. An ID bracelet catching in my lover's hair. And inside this feeling, diagnosis becomes slurry. Clay slab drowned in ice chips. And then bone dry breakable. Every shard a dagger for self-protection. The pelvis vanishes and a vertebra appears trailing a string. Hysteria, a language of unknowing. We draw the diagnosis from their mouths. Replace it with the taste of splintered seed. A line of teeth appear. Will be the unexpected crunch between teeth. Intruder in a spoonful of soft meat. Sharp pain in calloused feet. Stepping on a clothespin in an empty meadow. 
Will be perfect anomaly. Specimen for an epidemic. Prize mare, lockjaw, stiff and beautiful. A choir of whinnies riding raspy on the wind. A strange song. A dirge in the riverbank. A call edging towards the safety of the reeds. The bone leads the teeth away. You want to know if this is the life I wanted. I wanted to know how hard someone would work to make my life better. To keep me alive. The candy returns to its wrapper. Well, YJ and Jody have their new number one fan, me. We're really proud to be presenting such cutting edge work in our series. And we're eternally grateful for the wide variety of artists who agreed to let us showcase their amazing talents. Speaking of talent, the next person we want you to meet is Michelle Roy. She's a Mi'kmaq artisan from Acadia First Nations and lives in Liverpool, Nova Scotia. Michelle's passion is making authentic Mi'kmaq regalia, including beautifully intricate ribbon and beadwork. Here's a look at an incredible jingle dress that Michelle designed to honor missing and murdered indigenous women and two-spirit people. Jingles and crafting supplies sit on a table, along with fabric strips bearing the text MMIWG2. The jingles and strips are sewn together with thick red bands lining the strips. Michelle's daughter Miranda models the finished dress, featuring several rows of jingles dangling from the strips, a large red handprint on the chest, and a pair of red handprints on the back. Beautiful work, Michelle. Now don't go away. Next up is a filmmaker with a funny bone when we come back on Disrupt. Welcome back to Disrupt. We're going to end this episode of Disrupt with work by another exciting activist filmmaker and my personal friend, Spencer McKay of Halifax. Spencer was born with a rare form of dwarfism known as SED. Now Spencer uses a motorized wheelchair to navigate the world and has chased his lifelong dream of becoming a filmmaker. Now Spencer's also a stand-up comic. He's performed as part of the Just for Laughs Festival and regularly uses humor as a tool in his work as a filmmaker to great success. But today we're going to end the show with a deeply personal film. It was inspired by the misinformation and stereotyping Spencer faced regarding his ability to be a capable and fulfilling partner within an interabled relationship. Cue the tape. Matt Flake hosts his podcast wearing a headset and a sport coat with his hair slicked back. He's joined by Meg, who uses glasses and a wheelchair, and Arn, who has short hair and a close-cropped beard and wears a button-down shirt. Greetings, my beautiful snowflakes. I'm Matt Flake. Welcome to Flaking Around. Don't forget to like the... Ah, uh, fine. I'll do it one more time. Or do you want... No? no? Greetings, Snowflakes! How's it going out there? Welcome to another edition of Flake and Rob with Matt Flake. I'm your host, Matt Flake. Before we begin, please subscribe to the channel and like this video. In animation, a snowflake with a face, hands, and legs drops to the ground and points at a sign reading Flake and Around with Matt Flake. So as many of you may know, I recently became a bit of a celebrity thanks to some comments I made on last week's show. Since the tribute started rolling in, a lot of you suggested kindly that I look into intercabled comments fill the screen. Uh, Stacy? Interabled. Interstabled relationships more. So I sat down with one of the most famous interchangeable couples in the world, Arnie and Megan Bernard, from their YouTube channel, Meg and Arn, to find out what kind of blackmail she has on him. Video clips show their daily life. Okay, first question, how much are you paying him? They glare at Matt. Excuse me? I'm not paying my husband? Right, you're not paying him. Got it. Right, I'm not paying a man I'm happily married to? Oh yeah, it's like one of those make-a-wish thingies. Oh, Got it, moving no, on. No, 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 I, I, I am not being paid. Megan and I happen to be in a very loving, happy, committed, and interabled relationship. We're even married. Damn straight. Wait, you can do that? That's legal? For real? Yeah, we've been married for about a year. Wait, next thing you're gonna tell me if you can do one of those people can marry. Stacy, what is it when a Mexican marries an Asian? Interracial? Interracial relationships. Next thing you're gonna tell me that's legal. It is. Since when? Matt's eyes widen. Arn shrugs. Stay safe. A test pattern appears with the words, please stand by, superimposed. Okay, let's say you guys are a real couple. We are. Sure you are. So how often do you guys do the deed? Like, does your stuff even work? Uh, yeah. I mean, 
sure but it's good as yours um i mean does yours work only in church matt lowers his gaze meg and arn glance at each other okay so you two have done it then like you guys you... yeah excuse me well how often do you guys like um you know do the deed i don't know about the same as you you haven't had sex since 2005 I mean, okay, maybe a little more than you, like, a couple times. Ew, gross. No, no, too much information. No need to be crass like that. No one asked for that much information. Actually, you did, and I was just trying to answer your question, honestly. Yeah, and, you know, to, to, yes, and to answer your question in a more palatable way, we we do have sex. Uh, of course, we, we've been, been talking about starting a family. What are you, nuts? You want to have another child to take care of? No offense. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay, okay. first of all, She's very independent. I mean, sure, there's some things that, you know, I help her with, but, but everyone needs help. Don't you need help sometimes, Matt? What's well, a homeless man that I had to return my wallet that had fallen out of my pocket, so I pulled a switchblade on him. Does that count? Meg and Arn stare agape. No, no, it does not. Second of all, I, I also think that Meg and I will make great parents. She can't do anything at all. It all falls on you. Physically, you know, maybe, but, but not mentally or, or emotionally. I mean, yeah, the first couple of years will be tough, but we, we can get a nanny if we, if we need to. And we do have a great support system. Again, she will contribute and she has a great heart. And I know that she will pass that on to our kids as they get older. And, and that's all I care about. Okay, let's say you are right about all that boring stuff, but could she even, could you guys even have a kid? Could she squeeze a, a kid out of her thingy? Okay, I think we're done here. It's obvious to me. That you don't actually want to hear anything we have. Whoa, whoa, whoa. What's with all the hostility? I'm just trying to have a conversation. No need to get all emotional. I'm not emotional. I'm offended. Not emotional. Um, Stacy, what is it called when old people get all, you know, their bits start dying? Menopausal. Menopausal. No need to get all menopausal on me. I'm not even old enough for that. Okay, fine. You guys are a real couple, but don't you think you're stretching yourself a little thin? Think you're settling? How am I settling? But with looks, she's beautiful. She's sexy to me. Matt's head lolls I, back. I, I told you, we are going to have kids. We, we, His headphones slip I, off. I, I, he startles kids. awake. I, I, I travel. Uh, I, I have the wife I've always wanted. Our life is happy. We're happy here. If you say so. Listen here, you arrogant, misogynistic, ableist son of a bitch. I'm just the same as you, and for you to insinuate that I am not worthy simply because my rather fabulous ass is sitting in this chair, that's a you problem, not a me problem, and you can go for yourself. Hang on. I'm just trying to get down to the bottom of this. I mean, my brother, his husband, and I sat around for two hours last night trying to figure out how all this worked. Meg and Arn glance at each other. Um, your brother and his husband. So your brother is gay? Yeah, what's the big deal? Like, is that even possible? What do you mean? Of course it's possible. They're just people. Right, but like, how does that even work? They're, they're just dudes, right? What does that even matter? They may have to do things a little bit differently to adapt. Maybe it takes them a little bit longer to get some things done, but they're full of love and it works. And if it works, why does it matter how it works? But they're happy? Yes, yes, they are. And if you actually took the time to get to know them without judging them, you might actually see that they are a loving, caring, supportive couple. And maybe that's something that you'd want to have yourself. Meg and Arn glance at each other again. Wow, that was a real touching moment, guys. Like, I really touched myself there. Like, it almost made me want to say I love my kid. That's really inspiring. I'm just, I'm, I'm so uplifted. Maybe, um... You guys could come to Calgary, you and your brother and his husband, and we could really get a lesson on how all this stuff works. Ah, uh, no can do. If I get within two miles outside the city, this thing goes off like crazy. An ankle monitor. So as I've been clearly saying this entire time, love is love, and people just need to realize it's about the person on the inside, not the person on the outside. Clips show Megan and Arn cleaning and cooking. And those people deserve to be able to be given a chance in society without bias or judgment playing chess. And if anybody like these two tells you any differently, 
then they're just some closed-minded, ignorant, out-of-touch, irrelevant nobodies. And exchanging Christmas gifts. Thanks for checking out this week's episode of Flaking Around. Again, be sure to subscribe to our channel, like all our videos, and you can stay up to date with all our new episodes. Next week, we tackle the major issue of, are hamsters diabetic or are they just fat? Matt purses his lips. Thanks, everybody. Have a good night. Good work, my friend. You're going places, pal. All right, that's it for this edition of Disrupt. I'm Taylor Olson. Please join me again next week for another showcase of Canadian artists who are breaking down barriers for the disability community. Good night. Director and host, Taylor Olson. Producer, Rachel Bauer. Production manager, Lynn Matheson. Director of photography, Scott Barrington. Location sound, Eric Southey. Described video, Mark Phoenix. Writers, Christine McLean and Taylor Olson. Production designer, Jackson Noble. Editor, Reese Waters. Assistant editor, Kelly Rose. Assistant director, Spencer McKay. Third assistant director, Jay McManus. Makeup artist, Jennifer Lee Murphy. Composer, Jordell Downey. Artist curator, April Hubbard. Camera assistants, Kelly Rose and DJ Giles. Sound assistant, KJ Lewis. Assistant production designer, Brandon Boyd. Production assistant, Jeff Harrell. Logo design, Daniel Jardine. Legal Services, David C. Perlmutter. Inclusive Mentorship Coordinators, Rachel Bauer, Lynn Matheson, and Teamwork Cooperative. Special thanks, Art Pays Me. Produced in association with Accessible Media Inc. Integrated Described Video Consultant, M. Williams. Copyright 2023, Accessible Media Inc. An AMI Original Production.